With great power comes great responsibility. Uncle Ben's last words to Peter Parker as he was lying on his deathbed. If you're not familiar with these characters, they are two characters in the comic and the 2002 movie Spider-Man. If you are familiar with the old comic books of Spider-Man, and you know that Peter Parker took those words seriously, and as he heard, with great power comes great responsibility, it led him to take care of those in need, to fight crime, to do what all good superheroes do. And while this is a good message for the world, it's also a biblical message. See, all authority comes from God, our Heavenly Father. All authority that we have is not, we're not only accountable to those around us, but we're accountable to God, our Heavenly Father. And today, as we consider authority, we consider guidance, we're led to look at our gospel lesson. We're led to look at Jesus' use of authority. And as you look at the gospel lesson, you're probably thinking anything but authority. Here, Jesus, God of all the universe, heaven and earth are under his command. All powerful, almighty. He drops down on his knees and he washes his disciples' feet. He drops down on his knees and does something that a servant would do. Here, the rabbi, the master, the teacher gets down on his knees and does the work of someone who would be a slave. This is what Jesus did. As usual, he's turned power and authority, turned the world upside down. When he came, he did a lot of things that were not familiar for the people. He did a lot of things that normally a master would not do. Consider who else in the Bible got down on their knees and cleaned Jesus' feet. A prostitute with the tears from her eyes washed his feet with her own hair. It was not something that a normal master, a normal leader would do. But it was an example that Christ was setting of what a leader should do. A leader who receives that authority with humility realizes, well, Jesus could hold up to it. None of us can. A leader who receives that authority should know that it comes from God. Romans 13 is very clear. At the very beginning of Romans 13, and if you do have the Bible in front of you in the pew there, turn to 13.1, and actually all of Romans 13 talks about this, but 13.1 Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except that, wh- that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. All authority, not some authority, not part of the authority, but all authority on earth is from God. And as you think about that, you think about the fourth commandment. Honor your father and mother. And then you continue reading on what Luther has to say about that that it also is not just your father and mother that you should give respect to, honor to, but it's all those in authority. And if you're like me, you might hear that passage, you might think about that, and you might scratch your head a little bit. Because you look around the world today, and you ask yourself, how on earth is that authority from God? How on earth is the congressman or woman, the senator, obeying God's law when they pass laws that undermine His Word, when they ignore the will of their constituents? How on earth is a warlord, a dictator, obeying God's authority when they commit inhumane acts of atrocity against their people? How on earth is someone who is a teacher or a clergy member who abuses a child Obeying the authority of God. How on earth is a parent or a grandparent who refuses to love their child obeying the authority of God? How on earth? We have many, many examples of adults who don't fulfill their responsibilities of authority, who misuse and abuse their authority. But it doesn't end there. Children as young as middle school Elementary school, bully one another when they're stronger, tougher, smarter. High school captains on teams use their position of of authority and abuse that position by excluding those who are less talented. Many, many ways 
We have examples of abuse of authority. How on earth? How on earth are we supposed to listen to those authorities? How on earth can we believe that that authority is from God, our Heavenly Father? Have you asked these questions? Have you looked at your relationships, things in your life, and asked the question, how is that God's authority? Maybe not in those words. Maybe as you've looked at it, you have seen those abuses. And you've seen the corruption of sin in, those, in their lives. You've seen the brokenness of leaders who ignore the will of God. Should you still obey them? Should you still follow them? I know it's a question I've asked. It's a question I've thought about. How do I pray for someone who's in authority, who abuses that authority, who ignores God's will and follows their will? It makes it hard, doesn't it? And not just on a national or on a level in politics, but even in our own relationships. When we do abuse that authority or see others abuse that authority. Because when that authority is abused, it creates a lack of trust. And that distrust continues to grow the more we see that authority being abused. That distrust continues to grow the more they do, the, those in authority do things that are questionable. I don't think I'm alone in this. That as we look at those in power, it certainly at times make, makes us wonder. And it makes us wonder how God is using those authorities despite their wickedness. Despite their sinfulness. See, despite that, despite that wickedness, God can use those authorities. His Holy Spirit is still active in our world today. His Holy Spirit is still moving among us. You can't see Him. But His power is not gone. And although there are those who are in authority, who give in to their own sinful desires, rather than following Jesus' example and serving others, it does not mean that God has stopped loving or caring for our world. God still looks after it. He still is working. He still is using even the most sinful of leaders. Those warlords that seem like they're doing despicable things. He can still use them. To bring his loving message to the world. And that leaves us in an interesting position, doesn't it? Because even as Christians in this world, we're still sinful people. We're still people who are on this side of eternity. And it, it's hard to follow those leaders. But we read a little further in Romans 13 where Paul tells us that it is our responsibility to follow them. As we confess the words in the fourth commandment, honor your father and mother. We hear that command to follow those who are above us. And even with that lack of trust in those authorities, we can trust the true authority, God our Heavenly Father. See, although these leaders are misled by Satan, Although these leaders have followed poor paths, even in our own lives, although those who may be above us, parents, grandparents, clergy, teachers, politicians, bosses, although at times they are sinners, and they also can seek God's forgiveness. They also can seek God's love in their lives. And we can also... Seek God's guidance towards that forgiveness. Because we will at times have the opportunity to lead others. We will have at times have the opportunity to help guide others. And we can't do it on our own. But we need the Spirit in our hearts as well. With great power comes great responsibility. With great power we have the responsibility to share God's love. Do you remember how the last chapter of Matthew goes? All authority in heaven and on earth I give to you. Each of you, God has given the authority to forgive sins, to retain them, to follow leaders, 
to ignore their authority, to share his gospel, or to keep it closed up inside of you. And as those who are following the ultimate authority, as those who have been redeemed by Christ's blood, we have the opportunity and the joy to share his love. We have the opportunity to share his gospel message with those who otherwise do not know him. See, our world, as you can see, it's short-circuited. Those in authority aren't producing well. And even when Christ came, there was still sin in this world. But his example was that despite the sin in this world, was to mend the sick, to heal the broken. Despite the sin in this world, he set an example of love. He set an example of caring for others. And he set the greatest example by giving his own life on the cross for each and every one of us. Because in that act, he showed the ultimate power. And that was the power over death. That was his, the power of His love for each and every one of us. In that act on the cross, He showed us how to be loving examples for others. And so when we live in a world that is broken, that's short-circuited, we follow a God who is perfect. We follow a God whose leadership never fails or faults. We follow a God who loves us more than we can imagine. And so we do. We look for opportunities and ways to share His love with others. Whether it's as parents or grandparents, teaching our children about God. Teachers, sharing that gospel message in ways that we're allowed to even in the public system. As people who go to work or even are retired who live in our community and share Christ's love in our community. Even on the political level, we can also share God's love there. See, despite despite all else, we look forward to the day when we will join our Heavenly Father, when we will see the one authority and the authority of His love. And until that day, we wait but we wait with anxiousness, with hope, reassurance that Christ is with us, that His Holy Spirit is still working among us, and that all authority is from God, and He will use all to His will. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we are sinners. We've broken Your laws. We've not lived up to Your commands. We've not followed your authority. We've allowed sinful pride to exist in our hearts. We pray for your forgiveness through Christ. We pray that you would help us to see others as sinners and that they need your love as much as we do. We pray for those in leadership, those who guide us, that you would be with them, that you would strengthen them, that you would build faith in them and send your Holy Spirit upon them. Lord, we pray that all would hear your gospel message and that they would see by our example your love in our lives because you have given us the authority. You have given us the joy and the opportunity to not stop here, but to share your love with all the world. Lord, we pray that you'd empower us to go out, to share that love with all people. And it is in your Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen.